Welcome to a more philosophical discussion on the TechLore channel. Today I wanted to cover free and open source software, more commonly known as FOSS. Free and open source software is software which is, yes, free and open source, meaning that the code is publicly available for the community to verify, modify, and republify. There are already plenty of good videos which I'll leave here and in a description that cover the benefits of FOSS, such as possible improved security because more eyes viewing the code can check for exploits, and possibly improved privacy since people can check for any backdoors or any other sketchy data collection. Another great benefit is it is free and typically community run, so typically there isn't a sole company or group that the project relies on. I made this video to put a little twist on it and give you philosophical reasons to switch over to FOSS and why proprietary software is very problematic in our society. When you buy a brand new computer or smartphone, you most likely are going to end up with an Android device, an iPhone, a Windows computer, or a Mac. Those four devices will apply to a huge majority of you watching this video. The problem is that these are all running proprietary software. Android is open source, but it uses proprietary Google services and apps on a majority of devices. So what's the big deal here? The problem is that you have lost control. What do I mean by this? Well, whether you realize it or not, most of you are constantly being forced every day to use a device in the way that a company wants you to use it in order for them to control your browsing habits and manipulate you in a way to benefit the company. Whoa, 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 that's a huge claim, Henry. Yes, it is, and before you leave a rage comment, let me at least try to explain how. On your iPhone, Apple restricts what apps you can use as stock applications. They lock you into an ecosystem which requires you to use the stock green messaging app, the stock green phone app, etc. It is all developed by Apple. Many iPhone users aren't even aware that Android and other operating systems allows users to change their stock text and phone apps. iPhones also don't allow you to load any apps that aren't verified by Apple from the App Store unless you jailbreak, which is something that Apple constantly tries to kill and it's getting progressively harder and harder to do, even though it's legal. If you don't log into your iCloud account on your iDevice because you don't want to use an iCloud account, you won't be able to download apps from the App Store, which is the only way to download apps. If you are super happy with your version of iOS, you just love iOS 10, don't get too comfortable because Apple will push out an update in no time and they'll remind you about it every single day with no way to turn the notification off forcing you to update. Do you want to turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth for a week in the control center? Well, screw you, because iOS 11 only allows you to temporarily disable it for 24 hours. You have to open the settings app yourself and disable it old school style. If you are content with an older version of iOS, like iOS 10, and you don't want to update to iOS 11, you better pray every day that nothing happens to your OS, because if you want to restore your device to factory settings, Apple will require you to update to the latest version of iOS. There is no way around this. Don't even get me started on hardware. The iPhone's proprietary charging cable, which is nearly identical to USB-C, and even Apple's Macs use USB-C. They force lightning on you for a premium price for cables that break after six months, and most cheaper cables online won't be Apple certified, so they won't even work. As for upgradability and repairability, go check out Lewis Rossman's channel. To keep the video under 20 minutes, let's move on to Android because Apple gets on my nerves. Android is open source, but this doesn't stop companies from screwing with it. Most of you don't use stock Android, meaning a manufacturer like Samsung, Motorola, or HTC will install their own apps, settings, skins, and features into the phone to lock you into their ecosystem. This could mean their own proprietary camera, gallery app, messaging app, and sometimes even cellular providers try to get on the action by installing their own apps, aka bloatware. Since these are under the control of companies, they typically don't allow you to delete these apps, which restricts your ability to use the device to its full potential and locking you into an ecosystem. Luckily on Android devices, you can change stock apps, so you can feel free to change the messengers and other necessary apps, and you're able to sideload apps that aren't on the Google Play Store which gives you a whole new level of freedom that iPhones have never allowed. If you're on stock Android on an unlocked device that isn't tied to a carrier, which is most commonly a Google device, your freedom is definitely greater. There's little to no bloatware, you can uninstall most apps, and there are no unneeded features by third-party companies, but it still has its issues. 
you are locked into the Google ecosystem where everything requires a Google account to properly function, similar to iCloud on the iPhone. There is no way to remove the Google services or the Play Store unless you install a custom ROM, which we'll talk about towards the end of the video. So in short, both iOS and Android lock you into an ecosystem where you are forced to comply by the rules dictated by a company or even companies. Desktop operating systems you would think are better, but they're no different. Windows has its own ecosystem it'll constantly try to push you into. If you buy Windows on the Microsoft Store, they digitally activate the OS and don't send you the key in an attempt to get you to sign in to a Microsoft account so they can take care of it for you. Getting a hold of this key is also painfully difficult on Windows and make no mistake, this is purposely done. If you don't use Microsoft OneDrive, you'll be sure to know every day of your life because there is no easy way to remove the OneDrive folder in the file explorer, even after uninstalling OneDrive from the computer entirely. If you try switching web browsers, you'll get a nice notification urging you to use Microsoft's Edge browser. Simply installing Windows for the first time means you'll get tons of pre-installed garbage that you have no way to opt out of. On top of all of this, Cortana and other privacy settings are very frequently enabled by default, or they're hard to disable during setup in order to force users into using the features and services. macOS continues the pattern. Apple is extremely restrictive on what you can download and install, requiring you by default to open up the settings app and manually allow a program to be installed even though you already typed in the administrator password to give access for the program to be installed. What? Apple wants to only let the programs that have been Apple verified to be installed without this annoying workaround. This is also an attempt to get you to stick with the Mac App Store, where Apple has full control of the apps and the developers and they can get a large cut of the revenue stream. This is all done to discourage you from downloading programs from websites. This doesn't even include how important it is to have an iCloud account in order to gain access to all the features on Mac OS or the restrictive hardware side of Apple, which I previously discussed. FOSS encourages users to take back control of their digital freedom and gives people better ownership of their data. For example, Lineage OS is a custom Android ROM which you can install on many Android devices. It's almost entirely open source and it comes with no Google services installed, including the Play Store. So what do you do on this phone besides scrolling through the settings? Well, that's the beauty. It's up to you. There's no company that created an ecosystem for you and you have the choice to create one yourself. There's the F-Droid App Store, which is open source, and it only hosts FOSS apps. You can simply have no App Store and just manually install and update APKs yourself, or you can even install G Apps, which installs a certain amount of Google services on a device, including the Play Store if you choose to install it. The coolest thing is you have the option and no one else makes the calls <laughs> outside of you. For computers, Linux is the major operating system, which is FOSS. This means you have the choice between hundreds of different Linux distributions, each with different desktop environments, and each allowing you to customize it to your heart's content with no central company forcing anything upon you. The amount of freedom you gain is uncontested and quite honestly impressive when you compare it to Windows or Mac OS. Switch to Linux has a great channel breaking this down more in depth, so go check out his channel. Now like I said before, this isn't for everybody. Some people don't know how to protect their data and a company may actually manage it better than they can themselves. But that's why we educate them and it doesn't mean that users can't take ideas from the FOSS movement and bring it into their daily usage every day with proprietary software. You don't have to dramatically change your life. Switching from Google Chrome to Chromium means you're moving to open source software with extremely similar functionality. Moving to stock Android from a third party version of Android is another step to take which doesn't dramatically impact your browsing experience. To summarize, when you're using most devices, you're forced into allowing major companies to handle your data. This means Apple handles your messages and contacts, Google handles your documents and passwords, and Microsoft handles pretty much everything, including your OS keys. All of the data you store locally on these devices is dependent on the security that is implemented by the company and whether or not they allow certain security precautions to be implemented. I hope that this video answered some questions about the movement behind FOSS and whether or not it's right for you. FOSS truly is one of the most important things we have since it's giving us control of the software that we're using without going through a centralized entity that has full control of the software and how people use it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to 
smack that like button, and if you disliked it, well, let me know why so I can improve these videos in the future. Don't forget to follow the channel's Instagram. Come on, scroll. scroll. Don't forget to follow the channel's Instagram. Don't forget to follow the channel's Instagram page, Minds, and Discord to be a part of the community. I'll see you all soon on Techler. Have a lemurish day.